Well, I'm really excited and I want to welcome everyone back to the eighth episode of Get Stuff Done Cast. Today I'm joined by a person who loves two things, Mexican food and New York City. And I think we're tied on both of them. I knew that this brand I was building, which was really about Mexico, it was really about telling this beautiful story of Mexico. I had to take it to the next place after Playa del Carmen. And I thought about a number of places I could go and New York City felt natural. My good friend, Dario Wolos, founder of Tacobi Restaurant, uh, represents how an idea can become a successful business and New York City presents a wonderful opportunity for entrepreneurs. I had the opportunity to come and see you and walk through your factory. And it was just like seeing, number one, workers, good energy. People were really enjoying the atmosphere, a uh, good, clean environment. And just watching in Sunset Park, Brooklyn, where you are thriving and growing. So why don't you take us back? Because you have an interesting family lineage. Grew up upstate, right? I did. Take us on this journey. Totally. Um, thank you for having me here. It's, uh, it's pretty cool to be in the, the blue room. <laughs> so I was born in uh, upstate New York, close to a town called Corning, New York. My parents met in Mexico, in Monterrey. Mm. My mother grew up in that city, in a neighborhood called Vista Hermosa. And my father was born in France. His parents were refugees during the Second World War, and they were Ukrainian refugees. Wow. So my father ended up in Mexico for work as an engineer uh, to build this factory in Monterrey for this American company called Corning Glassworks, which is from upstate New York. And after they were married, they asked him to go to the headquarters in, in this town, and I was born there, and my two younger siblings were born there. And we grew up you know, with my mother. Uh, she didn't speak English well yet. But what she did know how to speak was the language of food. And so she would share her food with all our neighbors. And, and it was one of the earliest memories I have of, you know, her sharing that, that perspective of Mexico with all these people up there. You know, and it's interesting because you said something about the language of food. Yeah. I think sometimes we underestimate the universal language of food. Even if you don't speak the dialect of a particular group, a uh, food has a way of communicating. We're doing something in the city called Breaking Bread, Building Bonds. We want to have a thousand dinners and 10 people at each dinner, all coming from a different cultural and ethnic background and using the power and the lubricating value of a meal to engage people to talk because there is a lot of power in food and welcoming people uh, with the meal. Totally. Totally. I mean, I think that's, basics of hospitality, right? Mm -hmm. It's, it's what we do. We, we take care of each other, mm -hmm. right? Whether it's around the fire or around the kitchen table or, you know, in a, in a restaurant, um, I mean, we, we take care of each other when, 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 when you do that, um, you know, special things happen. It's, it's breaks down barriers. It's a level of intimacy and, and it's what I love about hospitality. Well said, well said. Now, so your dad was from Ukraine and your mom was from Mexico. Yep. Well, my, my dad was, Born in Paris, in mm -hmm. Paris, from mm -hmm. Ukrainian parents, mm -hmm. refugees. Yeah. So he's, okay. Yep. So did he speak uh, the language of your country and your town? So, uh, so he grew up speaking French and Ukrainian okay. were his first two languages. Mm -hmm. Then, it, and his life, he learned English. And when he ended up in Mexico, he had by that point a natural ability for languages and okay. picked up Spanish pretty quick. Okay, okay. So, you know, food is a universal language and love is a universal language. You know, that, <laughs> nothing that. motivates you more than learn a language and see someone you love. Totally. <laughs> so, and, and it was cool seeing my parents, you know, when I was young, uh, my mom still has an accent to this day, right? Mm -hmm. um, but uh, the language that they spoke at the beginning was really based on those two things you just mentioned, mm -hmm. was love and food. <laughs> love it, was, it, love uh, it, love it. Is that where you found your love of food? Definitely my mother played a big role in it. Mm -hmm. so my, my mother loves Mexico because she grew up there. She's patriotic, national, you, uh, you know, Mexicans love, you know, they love to celebrate their soccer teams. They yes. love all kinds of things, right? Mm -hmm. My father loved Mexico as a foreigner, right? So they, they loved it, the same things for different reasons. Mm -hmm. and, um, and it was in that I grew up in that 
two different loves for Mexico. Love it. Love it. How did you find your way down to New York City? Oof, it's a long story, <laughs> but the, the quick of it was, so when I was still young in Mexico, I remember uh, we did a trip up to uh, New York. Um, my best friend, uh, his sister and, and his mother, my sister and little brother and my mother, and we went to the, to the Empire State Building. And I remember going to the top of that building and, you know, I, I always had that picture in my mind of this, this beautiful, you know, shining city, right? And uh, many years later, I was in Mexico. Yeah, I'd opened Tacombi in Playa del Carmen. And I knew that this brand I was building, which was really about Mexico, um, it was really about telling this beautiful story of Mexico. Uh, I had to take it to the next place after mm. Playa del Carmen. And I thought about a number of places I could go and just New York City felt natural. I just felt like this is the place where the whole world comes, right? And the whole world can see this thing that we're building. And so I literally packed up my taco stand in Mexico and put it on a boat and shipped it to Florida. And then I trailered it up to New York City and found our first location on Elizabeth Street in Soho. You know, people often see the success and I always say that's your glory, not your story. You passed over it, but you stated that you packed up your taco stand. So you're telling me uh, this successful business started with a little taco stand. It did. Yeah. Uh, how was that? Man, it was it was tough. You know, in the <laughs> in the early days, you know, they you know, they a lot of people tell you and I've heard it being here, they say New York is tough. They say you can make it here. There's a saying, right? Yes, you can make it anywhere. Right. And so in this town I was in in Playa del Carmen, the bureaucracy there made it really difficult to do business. It was really tough. Mm -hmm. And it was also the time, you know, when um, just there's a lot of change happening in Mexico with uh, the cartels coming into the tourist zones and this. And so it was a, I was in my little taco stand and it was a challenging time. And I had this, this dream to share this story about Mexico and I, I couldn't get it to like stick in Mexico. People are like, just another taco stand. There's a lot of taco right, right, stands right. here. That's how, I was going to ask you that. <laughs> Because, you know, the uniqueness of a good taco, Mexican food, it's not because it's oversaturated, the market isn't oversaturated. But in Mexico, you know, you one of uh, hundreds of thousands of taco stands. Like, what happened that you decided to pack up your taco stand and come to uh, America? And Now, you, Ameri you were an American citizen because you were born in America. Yep. So it was easy for you to come over mm -hmm. with your taco stand. Yep. And you, you actually placed it on a boat instead of saying, let me leave this stand and let me buy another one when I come to America. Yeah. At the time, it was all that I had. I, I had sacrificed quite a lot to, to get into this business, right? And, and I wasn't making any money for the first number of years because like you, know, you were saying, there's a lot of better taco stands out there, <laughs> right? People have been doing it their whole life, right? <laughs> right? But it, it did come back to the, some basic things that I was learning when I was there, which was the other thing you just spoke about, which is, you know, love, right? That love and food, th those two languages. What I started to see as I was making tacos, uh, well, there was other people making tacos, is that the best tacos are the ones where the people who are making them really put their love into it. Wow. And there's something really like special about food. You can tell the difference when, when you know, the, the chef or the cook in the kitchen really cares, mm. right? And, and, and so I, I started paying attention to Mexican hospitality. Right? And, and what does that mean? And, and how do people, you know, when Mexico, there's a saying, mi casa es tu casa, or sometimes when you mi meet someone. Mi casa es su casa. Right? Mm -hmm. um, and, and sometimes when you meet someone in Mexico, they say, aquí tienes tu casa. Like, you know, it's just part of how we, it's, just, it's how, how, how people act there. And, uh, and I really started to understand that it, it really meant that. Like, people truly meant that every time they said it, so much that it became cliche. Right, right. right. And so I had started off this business but I had picked a name to represent the story mm -hmm. of what I wanted to tell, which were two words, right? And one of them was taco. Everyone in Mexico had eaten a taco or, you know, and, and all over the world. And the other thing was a combi. And a combi is this VW bus. And so that's what I, when I put those words together, tacombi, I w decided that the first thing I had to do is I had to buy a VW bus, <laughs> cut it open and make, and that was my taco stand. So that taco stand itself had a lot of meaning in it because it was really like where I actually 
you know, started this journey, bought that bus, drove that bus through the south of Mexico and really paid attention to all the little taco stands and all kinds of food stands all along the way. And so you actually put that bus on the on the boat. Yep. And brought it to New York. Yeah. Where did you end up first? First in Florida. In Florida. Did you sell for a while there? No, no, it was just on its it was just on its way up to New York. Okay, so the the, the destination was always New York City. Yeah. yeah. And so you started out selling on the street. Yeah. And take me to the next step. I'm in Playa del Carmen. I'm selling tacos on the street there. And the last pandemic, right, that a lot of people uh, forget about is was the swine flu. Right? I recall. So mm-hmm. the swine flu hit Mexican tourism pretty hard. So I was in Playa del Carmen. And one day, you know, it was 90% occupancy. Mm-hmm. And in two weeks, it had slowed down to 20%. Wow, that's yeah. a big drop. That was mm-hmm. a, just, you know, just, just like what we experienced a couple of years ago, mm-hmm. right? Um, except it was, it was much shorter. It was a couple months. And, and so what happened was tourism just dropped and it happened to come right at the end of the tourist season. So it really hit everyone in, in down there hard. And I was just in the third year of my business and I thought I can't give up now. And, you know, a lot of people were like, Dario, give up. <laughs> it's like, like <laughs> you can't beat these, you know, these, these people make better than tacos than you. And, um, and so I, I decided that if I didn't take it out of Mexico, it wasn't going to live to see its next iteration, right? Mm, the brand okay. I was building. Um, so I packed up that taco stand, got it on a bus in this, in, it's called Puerto Morelos, which is just next to Cancun. And there's boats that go, you know, serve the Caribbean, kind of like transport ships, right? Mm-hmm. And I got it to the port of Miami. And then I picked it up there with a trailer and brought it to New York City. And where in New York City did you end up? So I, I ended up, uh, for the first year, I didn't have a place. Mm-hmm. You just moved around. I just moved around. And I was, as I was looking for the, the, our first home. Mm-hmm. And, and I would, I got into the habit. I was looking for my first piece of real estate in New York City where we could open up the restaurant. And I didn't know the city. So I, you know, got a bike and I just pedaled up and down the streets of Manhattan, all over Manhattan. And then I started pedaling across these neighborhoods in Brooklyn. And then I started across Queens. And and I started seeing this really magical thing is I would go from neighborhood to neighborhood. And it was like going to different countries all over the world. That's right. That's right. And the food and and the people and the atmosphere. And then at the edges of each of those neighborhoods, you would see the people interacting from these different backgrounds and different cultures. Love it. Playing with each other, making fun of each other. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was some really special memories. And I, I was new. I was part of this, what was happening, you know? Until one day I was riding my bike down the street and I saw the owner uh, of this particular building on Elizabeth Street hanging up a sign that said, for rent by owner. Mm. And I knew that was my break because I didn't have the the resources or the capital to go through a broker. Right. I had to go directly to an owner. Right. So I see this, this guy himself who was an immigrant to New York in the 60s, a metal worker, right? Um, and that was his metal shop in the 60s, right? This uh, nice old man from Austria who can, he's one yes, of my something. godparents today in the city. Wow. You know? That was our first location in New York. Mm, okay. Now we have um, 11 locations in New York City mm-hmm. and we're growing now around the country. So we have locations in Miami, in Washington, D.C. And later this year, we're opening in Long Island, Connecticut, and Chicago. And so part of what you're doing now, you went from being a restaurant to you're actually producing the tacos as well? So in the early days, we started you know, with this first uh, taqueria, mm-hmm. right? Is, um, and a taqueria, the way that they, a taqueria exists in Mexico, it's not a full service fine dining restaurant and it's not a quick service restaurant either. It's kind of in between, right? So tacos are fast, um, but they, it's service at the table. And so in order to make a good taco, you need to make a really good tortilla. So I uh, searched for a good tortilla in New York those first couple of years and we couldn't find one. So... In 2014, we said, let's start making our own tortillas. And that was a huge leap. It, you know, it, it's, I think we, we were just trying to be the best at what we do. And it's, you know, and, and you had to kind of get to the core ingredients. And so mm-hmm. we said, let's start mm-hmm. making the tortillas. And we have a, a restaurant on 24th Street. We started making the tortillas there. And then we opened up a restaurant in the Empire State Building. We started making more tortillas there. And then Whole Foods came to us 
uh, from Williamsburg and they said, you know what, we'd like to buy your tortillas for Whole Foods in Williamsburg. So we would pack up our tortillas, put them on the subway, ship them to Williamsburg. Uh, and then eventually that kept growing. And then we started all the Whole Foods in New York. And soon we were selling more tortillas outside of Tacoma than we were using for our own oh, tacos. That is huge, right? A large uh, chain store like Whole Foods really could be a pathway into major business. This is the magic of New York, right? Like the, you know, someone at, at the office from Whole Foods was eating at our restaurant, tasted them and, and kind of began this conversation, right? And they were on their way to their one in Williamsburg and that's how it all started. Do you supply other outlets, other restaurants, other supermarkets outside of Whole Foods? Yeah, we're all over the, the country now. Mm -hmm. so we, we ship to 40 states. We do places like Fresh Direct here in the city. So we do online. Mm -hmm. um, and we do chains like Fresh Market and City Market in Texas and pretty much, you know, all, all, all over the country. Co-ops, big, big customers of ours. How, how, um, how large is your online presence? You know, is that a substantial vol volume of business? What percentage do you think come from online? It's a, it's a really big percentage of, of what we do. It's about 40% of our business today. That's huge. Yeah. How do you see the future in the business? What do you see yourself expanding? As we've been growing, one of the best parts about the whole thing is, is you bring on a team of people, mm -hmm. right? And, and, and then that team inherently wants to do more, right? And so in our company, we have these three values, fellowship, resourcefulness, and adventure. And, and that's kind of what's defined everything from the start in Mexico to coming to New York. Yes. All the people that work in Tacoma, we kind of share that. And, and so if someone wants more adventure, then well, we got to we got to grow. Right. We got to take this to, to more places. And, and, and a lot of what we're doing, we really love Mexico and we and we love sharing Mexico with other people. Right. And, and so I think when, when I came to New York City, I didn't realize how strong the Mexican communities were. No, here. It is. It's very strong. Very strong. Oftentimes I interact with the Mexican council general. Uh -huh. And there's just this level of patriotism. And, you know, what's beautiful about this country, uh, we do not encourage abandoning, abandoning your home country. We say bring the love of your home country and be part of the adopted country of America. And that's the mixture of the, of the country. We have a large Mexican population in Brooklyn and Queens. Yeah. And everything from the food to the music. Uh, just really adds to the city. It's one of the things that when I got here as an adult, uh, the first place I went to, to, the recommendation of some friends was to Sunset Park. So <laughs> okay. go, go try the tacos in Sunset Park. Mm -hmm. And I was walking down the street and I walked into a, a bodega and I saw this picture on the wall of a soccer team in Mexico I'd never heard of. And I was like, where's the soccer team? And they're like, it's from Puebla. And, and, but it turns out, you know, this, there's, such a strong community here just from Puebla, yes, right? And it's yes. one of, you know, 32 states in Mexico, mm -hmm. right? And so in just in New York, you have so much connection to the state of Puebla yes. that you have like subgroups, sub-municipalities of Puebla represented here and their soccer teams are on the walls. Each year when I was borough president, we would hold this annual event with the mothers that were from um, Puebla would come here and see their children for the first time since leaving Mexico. It was an amazing event that we used to do at Borough Hall. We would have a couple of hundred families that would come in. And that's when I realized such a large population here in Brooklyn came from um, Puebla. Well, that, that, that's this connection that's happening, right? Yes. There, there's a, New York is connected to the entire world through its people, right? And, and so there's... WhatsApp groups and messages going back and forth between here in Puebla and here and everywhere, right? And and people are sharing what's happening in both places all the time. And it, I think it, it's enriching both places. It does. Right? It's, it's the person who's thinking about at their, right now at their little stand, their little cart, and they're thinking about going this, into a business like this, what would you give them as advice? I think, you know, first, got to follow your heart. Mm -hmm. Right. Do it. Do it if you love it. Um, and second, you know, just don't give up. Right. And it's you know, pre pretty simple. I think things to, to stick to, uh, you know, there's there's going to be good times and there's going to be bad times. But, you know, there's always another day. And so you just got to 
follow your heart and and just never give up. And and I think like, you know, it, it makes for a just a, an amazing journey. You can never win the game if you don't get in the game. And you got in the game and now you have an amazing restaurant, Takombi. Good luck to you. I can't wait to get over there and try some more of your taco. Thank you, Mayor. Great to see you. <laughs> Thank you for coming in. And this is the information I wanted to share today. I hope to see you for another episode of Get Stuff Done Cash.